Here I have a question. Bob yes, Singh. I stumbled across this Rudy quote a couple of days ago, and I'd like to hear what you would say about this. Rudy wrote um, or spoke, it is a misconception to look for spirituality on the physical level, when by its very nature, the energy must exist in a higher plane. All the symbols of evolvement suggest the need to look above. Levitation, astral travel, angels, and tantric practice all pertain to an intense and refined energy that cannot exist in the heavy atmosphere close to the earth. Were you able to were you able to hear everything I said? I got most of it, you know. I mean, look, I we live on the earth, and each and every one of us not only is grounded on the earth, but we're connected to spirit. And to say that tantric energy can't exist on the earth, uh, the person doesn't know what they're talking about. It can exist if people build a chakra service. My, this is my mantra that I've been trying to get across to people forever. <laughs> if they build a chakra system inside themselves, there's no reason why they cannot practice Tantra. All Tantra is transformation. <laughs> That's all it is. It's transforming darkness to light. It's transforming heaviness to lightness. It's, trans it's what it is. It's just transformation. It's kind of a spiritual alchemy, you know, turning everything into you know, metaphorically gold. Why this can't exist on the earth is totally beyond me. And where the person, do they know what they're talking about? Have they really mastered Tantra and these other things? That so was, I, that was a, Stuart, that was a quote from uh, Rudy. That was a quote from Rudy? Yes. Really? Okay. Then maybe I disagree with Rudy. <laughs> what can I tell you? <laughs> What can I tell you? You know, I mean, uh, I I don't, I, I mean, I, I wish Rudy was here because I would ask him what he's talking about. You know, what's the underlying meaning of what he's talking about? But I, I don't know, Bob. Look, I mean, uh, I... I, I can't, I, you know, maybe something in me has learned something when past what Rudy knew. You know, I don't know. I don't know. He always told me, he said, you know, uh, you, you have to become more than I am. All of you have to become more than me. And uh, I... I don't want to get, go against the person who gave me my life, but I personally don't believe that Tantra can't... And one of the other things he mentioned that can't be, exist on the earth. Levitation, astral travel, angels, uh, were, the, were the other other three. That can't exist on the earth. See, this I don't, there's something wrong here, Bob, because Rudy talked to me all the time about astral traveling. He never talked about levitation. He talked about gods and demigods and angels. So I don't I don't know what this is all about, what he was thinking when he wrote this, you know, why he wrote this. Okay, so so let me let me read the last part, because I, I think I think this help, helps. It says, um, uh, uh, all those things I mentioned all pertain to an intense and refined energy that cannot exist in the heavy atmosphere close to the earth. Well, I agree with that 100%. You know, Tantra is not going to, you know, exist inside somebody who is heavy. You know, somebody that is, you know, really living in the mud. 
Tantra is the byproduct of a really refined system inside. A highly developed chakra system where there's a quiet mind, open heart, there's balance, there's foundation, there's mastery of sexual energy. All of this are the ingredients that go into Tantra. So I agree. When people are heavy, and yeah, 98% of the human race is heavy. And you're not going to find a hell of a lot of Tantra in that 98%. Then there's that other few percent of people that have spent their life mastering their inner selves. And, you know, they didn't read a book on Tantra and suddenly do Tantra. It evolved organically inside them. Same thing, what happened with me, it just evolved organically inside me. So I agree with Rudy, what he's saying. If those are the contingencies, because if somebody is in their mind all the time, if somebody is emotionally miserable all the time, if somebody is angry at the world, there's not gonna be tantric yoga going on in that person. Somebody is heavy, they're complaining all the time about life. And then, no, but then if that another person has truly mastered the chakra system and built that kind of an inner life, Tantra is just the next step, just an organic step forward. So I agree with what Rudy wrote. Now that you read the, the end of it, you know, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't work in heavy people. And I don't mean physically heavy. I mean, you know, their internal life is heavy, you know? So I'm, I'm hearing you say that you have to master the chakra system before you can even begin to work with yes, Patrick. That, that is true. That's what our classes are for. Where did I learn to do this? Look, before I met Rudy, I did all kinds of stuff. I used to manufacture my own meditations, mantras, this, that. I went to, you know, the Hare Krishnas, I was so desperate. I went and used to go down and chant Hare Krishna for two hours. Down on the, you know, on the Lower East Side, they used to have a center there. You know, what developed a chemistry inside myself that is capable of talking about and doing this level of work. It's the development of a chakra system. So yes, people have to do the work on themselves. Otherwise it's just, you know, just words. I mean, maybe I'm just writing, I've written 67 of these things now. <laughs> I'm on my 68th year, you know, of uh, these things. I mean, you know, and they're, they're, some of them are pretty wonderful. And they all evolve around various aspects of Tantra. So I agree with what Rudy wrote. Now, would you read the last part of it? Yes, he's very right on. But all of you, including myself, we're here to build the kind of system that takes us to the next level and the next level. It's a mandala. You start at the center and no, it just expands outwards and encompasses so many different levels of consciousness, including Tantra. And, you know, I'm not big on levitation. I, who cares about levitating, you know? I'm really not interested in that, but I am interested in Tantra because it's a major step in the transformation of all impermanence in a person into a spiritual life. I'm not that much interested in, you know, in uh, the astral plane, you know, it always to me was, you know, like just two inches above the head. If you hang out there, it was like slumming in the cosmos. But I am interested profoundly in tantric practice. You know, not the erotic, you know, element of it, you know, 
uh, which you know is also important. But that, but the transformative aspect of it, the alchemical aspect of it, of learning how to develop an inner life that can take all of that heaviness and turn it into spirit. Excuse me, I have a little cold. And, and I think that's what Rudy was getting at in what you read, you know? And he wasn't naive, Rudy. He knew the the level that somebody has to work on, you know, to be able to practice something like Tantra. And Kundalini Yoga, God bless it, is really the next step to Tantra. Because the whole purpose of Tantra is to activate Kundalini. And the training people get here and the activation of Kundalini enable will enable them to experience Tantra, which is the transformation of the good, the bad, the positive, the negative, all duality into spiritual enlightenment. I hope that's clear to not only you, Bob, but to everybody, you know, because, you know, when you read the final part of that, I agree 100% with Rudy. Does anyone else have a question? You know, I don't want to scare people, tell them they can't, you know, but I do want people to truly grow inside themselves. I mean, everything is so transitory. Everything is, you know, we born, we live, we die, we, we have all these possessions and we cling to them and one day it's all gone. And I, you know, it's very sad, you know. And yet we have breath, we have mind, we have chakras, we have will, we have need. We just need to use all of these instruments consciously. And then we tap life's greatest treasure, which is a connection with spirit and ultimately spiritual enlightenment the transformation of all the lower elements of life into a spiritual life. And then other people's bullshit don't, don't matter. You understand? You can laugh at it. You know, you don't get caught up in other people's lack of consciousness. They're there just to remind you about what you don't want to do in life. So you got to be grateful to them. They really are wonderful. That way. They're so good at reminding us what we don't want to do in life. <laughs> Whether they do it consciously or unconsciously, they're masters at it. And they're really one's teacher that we need to have the capacity to learn that way, which is the development of a chakra system for the eight billionth time. Does anyone else have a question that would like to ask? But just to finish this, Bob, I 100% agree with what Rudy wrote. 
I either I didn't hear that last part of it or you didn't read it. I don't know. But once you read that last part of it, I agree 100% with what he wrote. Had me a little rattled there because I never heard him <laughs> say anything like that without that last, you know, paragraph there. Does anyone else have a question? And just to finish, my job is to help you all do this, what I'm talking about. And honestly, it will in no way take away from anything else you do in your life. And just be able to do it all consciously, more consciously. And at the same time, you know, we live in the world and we are free of the world at exactly the same time. We are working out our karma and we are getting free of our karma. We're living our karma. And we are getting free of it. Do I have another question? Yes. Could you talk about the necessity of checking in with you to see if, uh, as a student, we're doing our work correctly, how and where we need to work? Can you repeat that? Can you talk about um, the necessity of checking in with you uh, about if we're doing our work correctly and where we need to work. You know, Bob, I'm here. I'm here. People send me emails, I answer all their emails. They call me, if I didn't get it, I call them back. I am open to talk to people. Well, this is bullshit that they wanna talk about, you know? But if it really pertains to their spiritual life, I'm here. It's a joy for me to do that. That's my purpose. It's very bodhisattvic, this purpose. To help people grow, to help people overcome the obstacles, the blocks, whatever they are. And yes, use me, for God's sake. It's terrible to be taken for granted. <laughs> Spirit, I have a question. How am I doing and where do I need to work inside? Uh, the first part of it, Bob, is I think you're doing great. I really mean it, Bob. Ever since this whole thing happened, something changed so profoundly in you. You know, really profoundly. And I had never seen that kind of maturity, that kind of change, that commitment in you. I, you're doing great. And where do you need to just keep doing what you're doing and continue to grow? That's what you got to do. So I mean, yeah, there's always, you know, look, if there weren't problems, we wouldn't be alive. You know, <laughs> there are always things that come up and problems and tensions and insecurities and, you know, you know, you're dead. You don't have those problems, you know? But then they just, again, remind you, I should read you these last things I've been writing. They're all about this. They just remind you, you know, what is, you know, what, what you have to overcome in order to get your enlightenment. They're your friends. They're your friends. And don't be upset about them. Just listen and learn and grow because of the things that are wrong as well as the things that are right. I mean, somebody has a, a difficult class and I, you know, my God, I'm bugged, I'm done. what's happening to me? Nothing's happening, you had a difficult class. <laughs> it's all right, <laughs> it's okay. You know, don't beat yourself up. You'll see, next class, two down the road, it, the whole thing is gonna reverse. I hear this all the time from people. Oh my God, what's going on? I got a headache. I got a this. My big toe hurts. I what? I, it's life. It 
in one of these things I wrote, what is, I wish I had, I can't put it in front of me, but uh, the best thing about impermanence is that it's imperfection. I forgot what it is, but it has to do with how imperfection is just part of perfection. Your problems and the things that happen are just part of the perfection of your life. Don't be upset about them. Just learn from them and grow. Does anyone else have a question? I mean, look, I am, I, I don't announce this too much, but look, I'm 80 years old, believe it or not. My acupuncturist came up to me at, at uh, you know, Pingo's memorial. How old are you, Stuart? And I said, I'm 80. I said, that's impossible. How could you be 80? <laughs> you look like a young man. He said, no. But how much can I, how much longer can I be around here? Take advantage of this, you know, take advantage of it. I mean, I don't think about age or even feel like my age, but, I, you know, sometimes I still shit, 80 years old. It's ridiculous. <laughs> it's ridiculous to be doing what you're doing today at this age. Take advantage of it. I mean it. Come to retreats. Do this. You know, I I told Jennifer that if, you know, 10 people sign up for the June retreat that are on the waiting list, I'll have another retreat. It can't be the, you know, the week after is Father's Day, but the week after that, I would have another retreat if people sign up. And so far, I think that five people are on the waiting list. Or something. You know, take advantage. Yeah, of course. Just a little money, but so what? You know, money is just bullshit. Can't let that interfere with your spiritual growth. It's also the only way I have to pay the rent. So try some money. <laughs> Does anyone else have a question they would like to ask? Okay, if there are no more questions, then God bless you all. Thank you. There'll be a meditation on Sunday. I'm looking forward to seeing you. Thank you, Stuart. Stuart, feel better. <laughs> Brings a tear to my eye, you know, to be able to connect with people on this level. It's really wonderful. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you. Love you. Love you, Stuart. I love you too. I love you all. <laughs>